Hi everybody and welcome to another video. Today we'll be painting lures with a really cheap stencil and I'm gonna show you how I like to use them and use a certain technique to get some really nice patterns and we're starting right now. Alright, let's begin. First of all I'm gonna do a white base coat on both of these lures. And I like to use Wicked White for this Combined with a little bit of 4015 and just to spray it a little easier I'm gonna thin that down with 4011 and by mixing a little bit of 4015 to my base coat that's gonna make my lure more durable and it's gonna avoid chipping in the future. So now that our white base coat is dry we're gonna apply our first coat and our first coat is gonna determine the lines that our stencil is gonna create. So whatever color is underneath, underneath that stencil, those colored lines we're gonna get. Now for this one, I'm gonna do a nice transitional pattern. And for this one, I'm gonna do a high contrast pattern. So for this pattern, we're gonna make a nice transition from yellow to orange and it's gonna look very smooth. And for this one, we're gonna create a high contrast pattern using chartreuse and black. And those two paints are really different so it's gonna create a high contrast and it's gonna make the lure really pop and stand out. So for our smooth pattern, I'm gonna do a yellow base coat and for this one, I'm gonna do an uneven light grayish black base coat because I want it to be uneven on this one. So I'm gonna use a black wash from Vallejo for that. Now I find this base not dark enough, so I'm gonna use a little bit of Wicked Gloss Black, which is actually a very transparent black. I'm just gonna darken up that a little bit, but still try to preserve a little bit of that texture that we just created. Alright, so now our base coat is dry, we're gonna put on our stencil, and this is a really cheap stencil, you can get it. At lure blanks you can get it at other places and it really doesn't cost a thing. The cool thing about this is you can create these really cool patterns which I'm gonna show you. And as you can see the direction of these fibers, I hope you can see that, they go sideways because I, I cut it like this. But still you can decide if you want to put it on with the direction of the lure or you can put it on like this. Now the big difference between the direction and the effect you're gonna create if you put it on like this you can already see that your texture those holes are gonna be much bigger so that means the pattern the the spots you're gonna create or the texture you're gonna create is gonna be bigger. If you put it on like this you can see it covers a lot more of that black and it's gonna create a much finer and smaller texture. So depending on, on the effect you wanna go for, you can either put it like this. Now I always like to use two pieces because one doesn't have really a lot of texture. So I like to use two so that it just, it gives a little bit more texture and it covers more of that background. So now we're gonna put these on. And it's very important that you put these on as tight as possible. The closer to the lure or it actually has to be against the lure because if you if you don't cut the stencil against your lure, paint can come underneath and then you're gonna lose your pattern. So you don't want that, you want your stencil to be on top of your lure really nice and tight. Alright, so now our stencil is on, we're gonna use Wicked Opaque Pyrrol Orange, which is an opaque paint that covers really well. I'm gonna reduce this with a little bit of 4011, just to make it a little bit more transparent, so that transition from the yellow to the orange is gonna be a little bit more smooth and not that high in contrast. But I do want it to cover really well, so I don't need to spray 
two or three layers because if we spray more layers we're gonna cover more of our yellow and we want our yellow not to be covered too much we want that orange to be subtle and smoothly on there now that we got our orange the trick is to shoot in one direction only you can spray it on straight on but then you're not gonna create any transitions then you're just gonna create yellow lines with an orange body now to make this special effect we want to shoot in one direction only and if we shoot from the face to the back of the lure we're gonna fill in the back pockets the back of the texture if we're gonna shoot the other way if we're gonna shoot from the back to the front we're gonna fill in the front now I want the effect to go from the front to the back so I'll be spraying in that direction too and filling only the back of the pockets with a little bit of orange. Now for a high contrast pattern I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna shoot from the front to the back but I'm gonna use white and that's to create a white base again because I want my high contrast to be high contrast. So if I would try to paint my chartreuse on this black, it's gonna be barely visible. And that is why we need a white base can. So that's why I'm gonna use a little bit of Vallejo that white. I'm gonna spray it only in that direction so that they still reserve a little bit of that black and fill in those pockets on the back. And then we're gonna shoot our chartreuse in the same direction to cover that white again and I'm gonna create a high contrast but it's only gonna be in the back of every pocket. Now to create chartreuse I always like to mix in one to one fluorescent yellow and fluorescent green. It's gonna create a really nice and bright chartreuse effect. For this paint I also like to use a little bit of 4050 just to make it adhere better and thin it down with a little bit of 4011. Another thing that I forgot to mention that's really important is that the white that you put on there is as white as possible. In order to create the brightest chartreuse you need a white base. So the wider the base the brighter the chartreuse is going to be because it's really easy to not cover that black well enough so that it turns a little bit gray or dark white and that's gonna get a less bright chartreuse. This is always the most fun part is taking the stencil off and see what you created. as you can see I scratched the paint here a little bit I will fix that later and it's not a big problem also on the underside I will just fix that it's not a big problem but it's a really nice smooth very uneven cool looking pattern looks like a little bit like a fireball or the Sun or something now the reason that I only use two colors is because I wanted to create a smooth transition if I would use a different color underneath my stencil and then use yellow and then use orange then that orange or that yellow that you're gonna spray in between the stencil uh, so what I'm trying to say is that only one color will be visible when you spray through the stencil in a direction because these pockets are really really small so it's it's very difficult to get two colors on there so that's why I always stick to two colors with this stencil if you want to spray in a direction and create a little bit of a special effect and it's much much easier to use two colors instead of three because you you can use a different base coat put the stencil on and then spray a different color on there and then in a direction another color but most of that color that you sprayed on there um, straight on is gonna get lost because when you spray on in a direction most of it as you can see gets covered anyway so it's really difficult to use three colors it's much easier and you got more control with two colors and then we're gonna take off this one and 
and as you can see a really nice high contrast effect. Now you can just put the eyes in and leave the lures as they are right now but I'm gonna finish these a little bit more do a few more colors on there create a little bit more texture and make them a little bit different but that's up to you I'm just gonna do this really quickly I'm not gonna explain every step now there are a lot of stencils out there and you can wrap them around your lures and shoot in that direction to create this special pattern or you can just put them on there and do certain spots on the gill plates or on the back or on the side if you want to do some little details you got these small scale patterns that are really nice you got very irregular small patterns what I also like to do is just fold them up triple or four times and it's gonna leave really small textures and you can just put it on the gill plates put it on the back or on the side just to make some really nice textures the same with uh, with the small scaling you can also fold these double or even four times to create these small little dots that you can put on there so play around with these stencils they are really cheap easy to come by you can find them in my store as well you don't really need much more to create a really special pattern just these cheap stencils an airbrush and some paint and some blanks and you're good to go and you can really make awesome stuff As always, I will leave a link in the description down below for all the materials that I use to paint this lure. This will guide you to my webshop which is based in Sweden and if you would buy anything there, you will be supporting me and the channel. If you got any questions or suggestions about using these cheap stencils or you just want to share some knowledge with the lure painting community, leave them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, have a nice day and see you next time. Bye bye!